Hey guys, it's Brian, and uh, today we're going to be looking at gasoline engines. This happens to be on a pressure washer, um, so this, this is going to hold true for pretty much any gasoline engine. <clears throat> Customer said that got to the job site, couldn't pull it, it's not wanting to move. So, barring the fact that the engine is bad, 99.9% .9 of the time, <clears throat> it's going to be a situation where you have fluids in your cylinder uh and what that means is the the engine has rolled over and <clears throat> gas and oil have leaked one way or the other oil up gasoline down whatever the case may be um whether the motor is backwards upside down whatever whatever you have uh, going on there so before we get started as usual this is a working shop so there's times i have to stop my videos in order to go help my customers I try to go straight through on most of the video so that you can see in real time what's happening and what's got to be done. Also, safety. want to make sure we don't have any... Uh... Brian, my four. <laughs> yeah, so um, safety is key. want to make sure what we're doing is safe. want to keep our phalanges, our ojos, everything that we were born with. Uh, so we don't have any pressure issues, uh, <clears throat> fuel issues, <clears throat> excuse me, for flammability. Want to make sure we're safe on that. So moving along, again, this is probably flipped over. The, the oil has drained into the cylinder. So I'm going to pull the spark plug uh, off of it, the wire off of it. <clears throat> we're going to pull the plug out. And this is going to help determine what we've got going on. If you do have liquids in your cylinder, then your spark plug is going to be wet. And as you can see, I hope, it's nice and shiny, which means it's wet. So there's oil on it. There's only one, well, there's two ways to get oil in it. One, you could pour it directly into the cylinder, which I don't think that was the case here. Uh, or the engine is rolled over. So wipe off the excess oil. We'll clean that out with, uh, clean it off with uh, gasoline or any, any kind of solvent to clean that excess off of there. But we're going to lay this to the side for the moment. A lot of times when this happens, it depends on how long the engine is laid over on its side. The enough will have drained out, but in, in the direction depends on which way the float's going to go. Um, gasoline can get into the, uh, to the crank. The way to check that, we're going to pull this off, and if gasoline has gotten in here, what will happen is it can overfill, and it'll just gush right out of here. So we got nothing coming out. So that means it wasn't laid over on its side for too long. It was just a short period of time. Um, the gas didn't get dumped down into the crank. We're still going to change the oil later, but we're going to go ahead and put this back on for the moment. The second thing we're going to check is going to be the carburetor. The oil can get into the carburetor. So if you clean the cylinder itself out, you still could have oil inside of the carburetor. So we're going to shut the fuel off on the side over here. I'm going to lay a, a rag right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the bottom bolt out, not the, not the side. And we're going to take the bottom one out. And the reason I'm doing that is because if there is oil in here, I've got to take this out anyway to take the bowl off. So I'm not going to do two when I could do just the one. So we're going to loosen this up and we're going to see what's coming out. <clears throat> if it's gas, you're going to know that it's gas. If it's oil, you're going to be able to tell that it's oil. If you can't tell the difference, then uh, take the bowl off anyway. So we're going to use our 10 millimeter. We're going to loosen it up. And there's definitely oil in it. And you can look at the color and tell. We're going to take this off really quick. There's going to be gas in it. See how yellowy that looks? And down inside, it's not much oil, but it's enough in it that this thing would not want to start proper. And there's a residue in the bottom as well, and that's going to be from the oil. So we've got that drained out. Sometimes the, the amount of oil in here is going to be really heavy, 
and you actually have to wash this out um, with a solvent of some sort. I'm going to go ahead and throw some in there anyway. Clean it out. I'm going to put this back on. This is actually pretty simple to do. This doesn't require a great deal of skill, which is why I can do it. All right, busy day today. So we're going to put the bowl back on. And you just set the bowl in place, put the bolt back in, thread it by hand to ensure that it is actually threading on properly so we don't strip it and tighten it back up. Now, get rid of this gasoline rag. The next thing we're going to do, I'm going to have to take it outside to do this. Uh, we're going to take it outside. We're going to give the recoil a pull. Because now that there is no spark plug, the fluid that's inside will actually jettison out of that hole as we pull the start rope. Now, don't typically you'll stand on this side of the uh, the engine while you're starting it. So you'll you'll reach over here and you'll pull it. If you do with that spark plug out and the fluid inside, you're going to get a crotch full of gasoline and oil because it's going to shoot out of there. And if you're average size. Uh, average height man, it's going to hit you right in the crotch. So you're going to stand off to one side and pull this. And make sure there's nothing on the side over here that you don't want to get covered in gasoline and oil. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to take it outside and we're going to pull this. And you're going to see the oil and gas shoot out of here. Now, I've got the engine turned to the off position so that we don't accidentally get spark while we're trying to pull this. And I'm going to try to hold this the best I can as I'm pulling this cord, but I want you to see what happens when I pull it. Did you see that? That oil and everything just shot out. You see it dripping off where it was blasting out of there. So I'm going to do it one more time. Now, now that I've done this a couple times, the uh, the fluids, a lot of the fluids have come out, but not all of them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let it sit for a minute, and I'm going to allow the fluids to run back down to the bottom of the cylinder, and then we're going to give it another pull, about two or three more pulls, actually. Okay, so I've let it sit for a few minutes, and I'm going to give it another yank. And when you do this, yank it hard, just like you're going to start it. still see a lot of fluid coming out. Now you can keep pulling on it several times like that and that'll get most of that out. You can actually take a, uh, an air compressor, stick the hose in there, blast out the fluid as well. Just be careful so it don't blast you in the face. But we're going to give it a few more pulls. let it rest again and then we'll come back okay so I've given it a few more pulls uh, I'm not gonna say it's hundred percent dry in that cylinder but we're gonna give it a shot now I like to take the uh, air filter off because if the air filter gets any kind of oil in it it's not going to start properly so go ahead and take that off put your spark plug back in hook your water hose up and turn the water on because you don't want to run this without the water running so I'm gonna turn that on in just a second but once I start this, it's probably going to smoke a lot. And you're going to see liquid on yours coming out of here, oil residue. Leave the water running. Let it run till that smoke clears up. That's all you can do. So we're going to give it a shot. Water on. Now I don't know if you noticed that. It was a delay in the 
running out that means there was trash in that outlet here and it blew it out and you can see in the video it was kind of rusty and dirty looking you can see the rust coming up in the hose here as well we'll deal with that later so I got the engine turned on we're gonna choke it turn the idle up we're gonna give it a pull it's hard to do one hand but we're gonna try I'm gonna set this down for a second So it's up and running as you saw all the smoke coming out of it it uh that's what's going to happen there's no way around that so as i mentioned before you can see oil you can see how shiny everything is oil 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 all of this is going to spit and spatter out of this system until it clears out once it's done there's no more smoke then stop everything wipe it all down when it cools off and you're, you should be good to go. Uh, again, put oil in it, which I didn't show you that because that's common sense. If you miss that, then you don't need to be doing this type of thing in the first place. But uh, the next time you go to use it, it's going to probably smoke a little bit or smell like burning oil. And that's just the nature. Until, you know, a couple times down the road, it'll go away. But that's pretty much all you got to do. Best thing to do is don't let it flip over. Strap it down, tie it down, lock it up so nothing happens to it. If you got any questions or comments feel free to give me a, a message there and i'll see what i can do again you guys thank you and we'll see you next time